Hey everyone, welcome to the Volleyball Data Lab. I'm your host, Tyler Whittison, and I've got our studio fired up, ready to dive into some serious data learning as the former performance analyst for USA Beach Volleyball. I know firsthand the importance of being able to handle loads of data. In this series, we will break down the use of R so it becomes easier to use. So get ready to spike your data skills. Let's get started. All right, for this first video, we're going to do some data volley parsing. If you are familiar with data volley files, or if you are not familiar, we will look at what they look like and what it means. Um, this is a data volley file. All right, there's a bunch of lines. It's a text file. This It's from 2015. Um, it's a Pac-12 file. So that that's saying um, that... Uh, the home team scored a point and then th or excuse me this line this particular line right here three to one and then this line is saying number 11 served and it uh, and there's a specific type of serve it's probably a standing float is my guess and and the opposing team passed well because it's a negative with the grade you can see right there um and they started from zone five and served to zone one and, and then there are particular times, and then there are particular player, excuse me, particular players in rotations. I believe that this actually 546 is a time stamp as well. If you see the reception goes up, reception time, because that's 27, 34, 546, 546, 546, 549. 555, yeah, so these numbers are timestamps as well. I believe that this is the time of day, and then this is the video timestamp. When you, yeah, I believe that's what it is. And then it's the um, home and away team uh, players on the court during that specific rotation. So there's a lot of information in these files. Um, we're going to take all that information, we're going to put it into an Excel type of format. The first thing we're going to want to do is install um, it. I'm going to put the previous video of how to install R and install data volley package for R um, in the link below. So you can use that as kind of a roadmap. This is kind of a continuation from that. Um, so again, the first thing you're going to want to do is you can come to this website, data volley, open volley .org. You can copy this and you're going to paste it and you hit enter and then mine is already updated so I don't need to install it any further. All right, so once you get to this point, it's like, okay, what the heck do I do, right? So there is actually another window we're missing here. Um, if you come up here to this top right button, it looks like a, a window in a window or a window over a window, when you push that, that opens up um, your work, uh, your your work, basically, where you're working. When you say, so like when you, uh, in Data Volley or possibly in Volley Station, when you create some kind of um, analysis or report with home teams and away teams, serving, reception, um, like a worksheet. So th this portion is like a worksheet. So you can kind of maneuver these windows and what happens is like they can go away every once in a while like this will go away it's kind of annoying so keeping all four open for now is is a safe bet personally for me i like all four open there's a lot of people that like you can like rearrange these things they're called window pans uh you can rearrange them and like some people have like um yeah like like this at all times um with actually these two windows like on the left hand side uh I like this, it's easy. Um, that's kind of some navigation information. So from here, you got this empty untitled window. We're, let's go ahead and save it and let's call it Volleyball Parser. All right. And as you save it, you can see that it came, there was something that came up right there. This is really important that you get to know what the paths are um 
I don't remember how to do this. Uh, how do I get the get the current path? I don't know how to get the current path. I forgot. R get current path. Um, get the WD. Oh, that's too easy, right? Um, so that's the working directory. So that means that is where your current folder is opened at, right? So you can see that right here, volleyball parser. So if I go to this window, I should see that file. Um, so let's do this. Uh, it's going to be in desktop. R, and there it is, volleyball parser, right? We can close that, short that down, not, not that I'm using this work computer. Um, but I'm not trying to do anything else with this for now. Um, you, from here, uh, you're going to probably say something like a library, and then you're going to type in data volley. So what that does is uh, data volley is like a hammer. And you're saying, hey, computer, go get me that hammer. Hey, hey, uh, hey, CRAN. It's actually not in CRAN. It's in your operating system. But there are virtual machines that actually could grab it from CRAN, or, which is an online tool box for all sorts of libraries. But basically, you're saying, hey, Data Volley, let me borrow you. I'm going to use you. Give me everything you got, Data Volley. I want to use all of it. So you, you want that. And you also want to probably use tidyverse you can break it down and in break this down to keep it simple you probably just want to use tidyverse so you're going to want to come down here and also do tidyverse uh and again the video explains this in the first first one um hopefully mine is updated and i don't think it is it is all right great so i have tidyverse i have data volley all right so you can also comment. It, it's good practice to comment. So uh, libraries loaded. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, now that we borrow these tools, Tidyverse is actually uh, like borrowing Home Depot. But, um, and so, at, and you can actually just say, hey, give me this aisle. And instead of you get Tidyverse, you get one aisle. Uh, but there's like, there's like a whole bunch of stuff outside depiler, depiler that we'll um, be using. But just to keep it simple, we'll just call Home Depot. If your file gets big, you use like um, 2,000 data volley files, you're going to want to just use the Home Depot line, uh, aisles. Otherwise, um, it could slow it down. Um, so we have the libraries loaded. And now let's go back to this. There is something we can do here. Uh, open volley snippet so this is a great website i will post it in the link as well come to reading files and we want to read a data volley file so let's just copy paste that and say thank you to ben and adrian um and you see there i don't want data volley here loaded twice so i'm going to hit Control d and that's just going to delete that so let's say in our in our uh, comments because we want to comment things so when we come back later we can understand what the heck we did if we get confused um, about what we're looking at we start looking at something like why did I do this and if you have comments you remember if you don't have comments you're gonna be like looking at you're gonna have to like go all the way back up and it's obnoxious if it gets really really big um, and it's good practice and if anyone looks at it they're gonna want to see it commented it's just uh kind of a framework that it's uh it's it's kind of a standard um framework that a lot of um people use you don't have to it's just a good practice sorry that's a tangent so what am i trying to say um read a single data volley file all right so that's what this is going to do so right now you can re if you remember our path you have to call the data vault, you have to call DV read. That's like going into the data volley toolbox and you got the hammer and you're like, all right, now give me the no. So 
if you don't have the path correct, it's like trying to take a screw instead of a, a nail. It's not going to work, right? I mean, okay, for this, for the intents and purposes, maybe it could work, but uh, that's not the point. It's not going to work for so, uh, computers. Let's say that. So um, I have no data volume files. I know where my data volume files are. I'm kind of try trying to play a trick. So I'm going to take three. I'll go back and put them in there. So now you can see I put my data volume files inside right here. Tyler Whittison documents are Tyler Whittison documents are all my data files are now in there. So if I come back here, you can see on the bottom right, these actually loaded up. Now again, now watch what happens when I take them out. They go away. All right. So um, this is an important concept because if you don't have the right path, it, it becomes very annoying to try and do this. Um, let's create an example here. Uh, let's move this one here. Let's copy it. So now if I say this, so this is my file name, .dpw, right? And I'm, I'm going to say, data volley, hey, take the hammer and swing it at the screw. It's going to say error. You're going to say, I could not find function. Wait, probably because I haven't loaded these. I thought I did. That was weird. You got to make sure to load your library. And you can do that by highlighting and then hitting control, enter. And you can see on the bottom pan, something comes up. All right. So let's try that again. I have my file name read in, right? So if I highlight that only, or if I type in file name down here, you can see that this is now red because I highlighted this and hit control enter, right? You can also hit the run button too. So if I comment that out, when you comment things out, it basically is saying, don't run that. Um, so if I hit run, that'll run that specific file. There are different Run the current line. Ah, there you go. There it is. Boom, baby. So current line. Okay. When you run it, that's saying that's entering it in. That's driving the hammer through the wood, saying, "Ba boom, baby. I just built something." Right. That's what that does. Okay. So now, if you remember, I move this file. So in theory, because I'm in the working file of here and the file is not there, this should error out. And it does. You see, it does not exist. So if you do, in fact, have a different path, you have to take... Oh, geez. Give me one second here. Let's do this. File name. Because I cannot remember things. Um... Man, why is this desktop? Um, what if I did that? Would that work? I don't know. I'll be honest. Probably not. Nope. I have to hit type in um, get working. So uh, this, yeah, as you can see, it gets really annoying, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Because right now I'm stuck. I'm like, where the heck is that file? I don't know where it is. Um, also, it has to say dot dpw so uh, this is a long video just to talk about parsing um but this is an important concept you got to know so if if you run into these kinds of issues so if i hit um get working directory right i can take that let's take that off oh control d and let's just replace it with that and i whoops Let's do that and backspace that and slash that. I know it's not an R. I think it's in documents. So if I do that and then you can copy and paste that. DV, let's DV read file name. And there we go. Now it's doing what's called we call parsing. All right, that's taking the entire data volume content and putting it into something usable. All right, so that is how you read the path. So what happens 
if I do this. I put the file back in there. Now, because my working directory is um, that, right? It can uh, read it. And as you can see, it reads it. So the paths are important. So you could you could change this. You could change this to like uh, um, where does the date of folly seasons usually live? I can't remember. It's like C. Um, I can't remember. Maybe if I look at my own, I don't have it on here, but maybe my brain will help me remember if I look at it. If it's like C. And I think it's just data volley from there, isn't it? It's like, you could say C data volley slash seasons uh, slash 2022 slash, and then give the file name, right? Um, and some dvw dot dvw. And then it closes it off like that, and then it should read it. Uh, so you can do that too. You can create the path however you want. So when you parse the files, this has been a wrong video just to talk about this, but it's an important concept to know, hey, this won't work unless this, right? Um, so, all right, so we're just gonna go, we're gonna pass this part because this is taking me much longer than I wanted. All right, so we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that. Now if you hit X, it's all there. So awesome, I read a data volley file. Now what? Now what? There are a whole bunch of things happening, all right? It talks about reading more than one file, but I wanna skip over this a little bit and I'm gonna say uh, DF and what the arrow and the dash mean, it says like, uh, I'm, I'm driving a, a nail through a specific type of, of piece of wood. Um, I'm, I'm trying to name an object, my object being DF. What am I going to name DF? You could also say equals um, for that. Okay, so I'm going to name DF X plays. So primarily, that's going to be your favorite friend in uh, using the data volley package. So now when you hit DF, right? So this is sort of not my favorite thing in the world that there's like how there's like tons of columns. Um, now you can see it's kind of like in a table. This is the data volley file in a table, but there is a whole lot of stuff going on. You can see it's not super user friendly. I mean, it. I excuse me. It's extremely user friendly. However, it's not very uh, easy to read if you don't know what you're looking for. So we're not gonna get more into that. Um, actually, it's really easy to read. I'm kind of rambling. I'm rambling way too much. All right, so read multiple files. How do we do that? So, all right, we have our data volume file into it in Excel type format. Hooray, we did it. With a with me rambling entirely too much. So we're gonna take reading multiple files and there are many different ways to do this. You can see if your files are in directories, um, you're going to uh, change that, where, where the directory, where that those directories live, or those, those files. Um, so we're going to take this. You're going to want this no matter what, even if. So my, my directory, uh, the working path is saying this. I, my, I know mine is in my working path. So if I were to do this, I can copy and paste that down there. I will see three data volume files because that's how many I have in there. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to run it. All right. So now D is equal to those three files. That's pretty cool, huh? Now, what there's three different ways Open Volley it gives you to read multiple files. Um, 
excuse me, sort of two different ways. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that and this. Excuse me, not that, this. PX down here. So there's do call or bind rows. So th th this is kind of the fun part about uh, R. There's a lot of different ways to do things. It's really, it makes it really interesting. Um, I'm going to do it this way. And I'm actually going to call that DF. All right. So now just run those three lines. So this is taking the directory. This is saying, this is a kind of a comp, it's not a complicated, uh, tool l apply but it is you have to know what's going on l apply is saying look at the list and apply something okay so d we're looking look at d hello d you're a, you are a list of three items three data volley files and you're gonna go data volley read those and we can even take this out if we so choose and it will still work. So uh, once you once you get to about like I don't know 100 file like 50 files you're reading and it gets a little slow. Um, maybe not super slow, but it's you're not going to read it. You're not going to read it in 30 seconds, or you know it's going to take longer than that. So you might want to you know grab a drink of water or something as you're doing this. So um, you can see my three files. Took a few seconds, not super long. I don't really know how long. Um, so once you read those, those are now in a list. So remember X, that big gigantic thing. You have three of those files now like that, that live in LX. So what we want to do is remember DF up here, we just had the data frame or the Excel type of looking format of the data volume file, right? We want to take that and we want to put those three files in that same format. And that's what this little code right here does. Actually, what we're going to say, we're, we're just going to call it L for now. So that way, if we want to use this later, we can. So, all right, we're going to call that DFL. Now what happens, I have that many rows in DFL and that many rows in df so now we got three files loaded so okay that's the first video parsing files we talked about paths way too much sorry about that that was really long to talk about paths but it's an important concept uh we talked about reading one data file we talked about reading multiple reading or parsing multiple data data volley files cool